This is Pastor Justin A. Rojani from Following JC Ministries at www.followingjesuschurch.org. And today I want to ask you, what do you know about God's days? And are you celebrating them? Christians have been misled and told that these are Jewish holidays. But in order to have everlasting life, we must celebrate them. So as always, you celebrate patriotic holidays to commemorate in in remembrance of important worldly events of each country's history. Now, if I ask what each holiday stands for, you will probably be able to give me a bit of info on it, right? Now, most people believe that popular observances such as Christmas and Easter are truly biblical, but just as Jesus did, so shall we. And I ask you, where in the Bible do you read that Jesus celebrated Christmas and had a stocky white bearded man in a red suit running around spreading cheer to little boys and little girls everywhere? Because last I checked, just about everyone was such a sinner that the Lord Jesus Christ had to come and die for all of our sins. Now, the only one that I know that gave gifts to boys and girls was Jesus Christ given the gift of eternal life. Also, where I asked did you read in the Bible about a little Easter bunny running around giving colored eggs and chocolate to children? So now that I got you thinking, I want to ask you if you are celebrating the true biblical holidays that God told us to celebrate. You will not find any of these two world uh, holidays celebrated anywhere in the Old or the New Testament. The only place that you could even find the word Easter in the Bible is in Acts chapter 12 verse 4 and it is only because the King James Version mistranslated the Greek word meaning Passover as Easter. Now in the New Testament we see that Jesus observes the holy days of the Bible and likewise his disciples followed his example in observing them decades after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So with that being said, where in the Bible did it tell you to stop observing them? Exactly. Nowhere. The apostles taught us that God intends for all Christians to observe the biblical holy days. Why does God want us to observe these holy days? Because they reveal what God wants us to know about the future, about God's great future for mankind. Now, God's holy days fall during three different seasons of the year. The early spring harvest, the late spring harvest, the late summer to early spring harvest in the land of biblical Israel. They are all the spiritual harvest of mankind to eternal life spoken of by Jesus Christ himself. As you can see in John chapter 4 verse 35 through 38, it says, do you not say there are still four months, and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap, for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. Now, these festivals reveal God's plan and how he will establish his kingdom on earth. Now, in Leviticus chapter 23, it shows us that the listings of God's festivals. And now God made it clear to Moses to make it clear that these are the feast of the Lord. Now, did you hear me? I said that these are the feast of the Lord. Now, verse 4 and 37 make it clear. The word feast, translated in this case, is the Hebrew moedim, meaning appointed times. Appointments with God that he wants us to keep. Now, the Bible also teaches us that eventually God will teach everyone to observe these days, as in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which come against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts. 
and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Do you hear me? I said to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. That's Zechariah 14, verse 16. So we see clearly that God's holy days are current today. Now, each one of these feasts is preparing us to be ready for Jesus Christ's return, his second coming, the return of our Lord and Savior. Now, I will show you a big example of how one of the last feasts, the Feast of the Tabernacles, preparing us for the feast that we will have as the bride of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at his second coming. The Greek word translated dwelt means tabernacle. So at Christ's second coming, he will tabernacle with those who are saved. He will dwell with his people for a thousand years with the thousand year rule of Jesus Christ over the earth. And it's the ultimate fulfillment of this feast. It's prophesied in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. And it says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God in Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. So we see that Christ is at the center of this feast. Now the eighth day, the last judgment, on the eighth day, there follows another separate feast day. The last of the biblical feast. In Leviticus chapter 23 verse 36, during Christ's 1,000 year reign, all of mankind will be offered God's spirit. And beyond that, the Bible reveals there will come a time, a future time, when Christ will offer to those who rise up in a resurrection of the dead from all past ages. Now in Revelation 20, we read what happens after the millennium, pictured by the Feast of Tabernacles, which is completed. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And I saw the dead small and great, standing before God. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Now that's Revelation chapter 20, 11 through 12. So as you can see, we have been misled to believe that these are only Jewish holidays and not Christian holidays. But in order to have everlasting life we must celebrate them now here's a look for you of the eight feast of the lord